I'm Claudia K, and welcome back to my channel. I've got a very eclectic haul for you. Some things that I wouldn't normally have. I don't know. I like to provide variety. And sometimes I pick up things that just speak to me with no explanation. <laughs> why so it's a very eclectic very strange haul today um this came from yard sales on i think friday because it was just gorgeous here in ohio on friday um and then flea market which i ended up having to do by myself because my niece wasn't feeling well and um then i went to a goodwill and if you don't know, I have three Goodwills within like 15 minutes driving distance from my place. Um, I've kind of stopped going to the one that I pass by most often completely because they just have not had anything in months and months. And um, like the store is filthy. The employees are not nice. It's trash like literal trash, you know, the, the wee, um, yogurt cups and the, um, empty wine bottles. Some of them still have the labels on them, like trash. But, um, this one that I went to is the one that is in Ashland close to the flea market. And so I don't get to that one as often just because there's nothing else around there I would normally go to. So it was nice to, um, be in that one. So I'm going to show you everything. There were a couple of fails. You know, when you are in somebody's dark garage picking up items, you can, sometimes you just don't see chips and dings. And so once I got things into the dishwater, I realized there were a couple of items that I might not have paid that much and wouldn't have picked up if I had realized that they had a chip or a ding. So we're going to start with, let me see if I can find it here guys so pretty and don't forget to like comment and subscribe and when you comment let me know what your favorite item was for today all of these items will be up for sale wednesday morning at my live sale 10 a.m eastern um if items didn't sell you can always re-watch the sale later if you're not able to see it live and see what's still available every flower and every leaf appears undamaged can you believe that? It's so stinking pretty too. So Royal Adderley, we all know that I love any of the fine bone china items made in England. I love the flowers. So little Royal Adderley. I set that over here carefully so it doesn't get dinged before I sell it. Um... I found a couple more pieces of made in Italy pottery. So I'll show you the bottom. Just a single candlestick, but um, oh, that is wax right there. I wondered what that discoloration was. I thought I got most of the wax off of here, but I missed the wax here. So I will have to clean that wax off, but candlestick made in Italy. This is one of the things I knew it was Avon. You know, Avon's not worth a lot of money, but look how pretty the bird on this little jar is. But what I didn't see was some damage to the point here. So it's got a chip a chip. But the bird was in excellent condition. And I have no idea what this jar originally held. But a little bit of Avon gla milk glass. This is the one that I did not. And these were two different garage sales and they were in actual garages. 
not out in the yard or the driveway where the sun could hit things. So I thought I had looked it over really well, but once I washed it, it's got a chip. I was really disappointed about that too. But this would be perfect for fudge or divinity, any of your Christmas candies. But didn't see the little chip, disappointed about that. And last thing from garage sales last week was a Holland Mold piece from 1972. Ed made this one and I think Ed did a really nice job. That's a nice size. And Christmas will be upon us faster than you could imagine, I am sure. All right, next up, went to the flea market. I found this little tea light or votive holder. It's purple. I only got it because it's purple. It's unmarked, but I did find one that was the exact same look in a different color um, from the 80s when I looked it up online. So maybe 1980s, which to me feels like 20 years ago, not 40 years ago. But little tea light is purple. You know I'm going to pick up anything purple. And then the star of my haul. How about some Viking? Ooh, I love Viking. A few years ago, I found Viking constantly. Lately, I have only found a rare piece here and there. So it's a six petal fruit bowl. It is giant and it's just its color is so so good no chips no cracks i love it love 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 it love it love it and this is um what i think of as christmas green this is not the avocado green but she's a beaut Next up, I think this one might be Viking too, but it is a different green. And this one has a small chip on it. I knew it when I picked it up, but um, the chip is somewhere on the bottom here. But look at that smooth bottom but definitely a different color green from the other one. And this isn't even like an avocado green. This is more like a, an apple green maybe, but I think it's Viking. So two pieces of Viking, I mean, come on. And then I found a signed brooch, which, you know, sometimes when they're signed, it's a JJ brooch. It's only going to be like worth eight to ten dollars. And the signature I thought looked familiar on it, but it was so big and gaudy. I just had to pick it up. I mean, it is big. And I got it home and I did some research and it is so cool because the designer was Mimi Dinasini. And they called her the princess. She'd actually married a prince. She had designed up until I think the early 1990s, she stopped designing jewelry. Um, just very cool story about her as a designer. And these pieces are worth way more than I thought they were, which was a very cool thing. So here's the back. And I guess some of her pieces, she did a lot of big, like gaudy um, belt buckles. And um, some of her pieces were signed with a year, um, I think starting in the 70s, not all though. And then um, there were two other designers or companies she worked for that would also have had their signature. I'm kind of thinking this is from the 60s. 
but she designed jewelry for like the Duchess of Windsor, um, Jackie O. So that was a very, very cool piece to find. So that there carefully. I did pick up, I think, three more things for the giveaway box. So do not forget that on the 30th of this month, I believe it's the 30th, last Wednesday of the month during my live sale, I will be giving away a box because we are celebrating my three-year anniversary of live sales on my channel. So I'm going to do a giveaway box. Next up is this vintage Amish doll. And she came with a stand. And I think, yeah, she's one of those dolls whose eyes close when you lay them down. And that's a, a metal spring for her feet to fit in. She sits in there and then, which is very unusual for anything that I would normally pick up, but she was just kind of cool. I live very close to Amish country. You drive, 30 minutes in any direction away from the city and you will be in Amish country around here. So picked that up and uh, next, you guys, have you ever found something that's just so beautiful? It's out of your wheelhouse. It's not something you would normally pick up, but it's just so stunningly beautiful you have to. Look how beautiful this is. Beautiful. This is Bone China from England. And the company is Hammersley and Co. I think Hammersley and Co. There are no chips, no damage to this. It's exquisite. <laughs> it's just so stinking beautiful. So I picked that up. It's not something that I normally have at my sales. So I hope you guys love it as much as I do. It's just stunning. Next up. This is also England. Quite a few things were England from this haul. And this is, well, here I can show you the bottom while I read this. Gray's Pottery made in Stoke-on-Trent, England. And this does have a lot of crazing, a lot of very fine crazing. I don't even think you guys can see the crazing. So I got that little creamer. And then we went over to Italy and we got another piece of Italian pottery. So this one is also Peasant Village. I had a Peasant Village piece for sale last week. The colors on this just make me think ocean. So, creamer from England, creamer from Italy. Then I thought I had found a really cool piece this mug and I, I cannot read that. I'm kind of thinking it says something Garcia. I couldn't find anything. A search didn't show anything, but when I got it home and held it up to the sunlight, there is a very, very fine crack. I think in here. Now I did give it a good scrub and then let water sit in it and water did not leak out of it. So I don't know. I bought it for resale, but maybe I'll try drinking out of it and just see. I liked the shape of it. It just has a nice hand feel. And of course, handmade pottery. We all love a good coffee cup. But I was very disappointed. It's got this a very fine crack that appears to be at least in the, um, oh, you know, the top layer, the, ugh, my brain's not working, you guys. 
Next up, it's a cat. Look how derpy and creepy and weird he looks. And I submerged him because I was like, well, if the rest of the black comes off of him, he'll probably look better. The rest of that black paint's not going anywhere, you guys. I don't know why half of his black paint decided that it would take off and <laughs> this half decided it would stay, but he's screaming at you for breakfast, apparently, because his hat is empty. But it's Halloween season, so I had to pick him up. He's a little guy. He's so funny with that face. And you guys are not going to believe this. I found another piece of Waterford different from the, what, three, four pieces I found recently. It's a heart bowl. So another piece of Waterford crystal. No chips, no cracks. Stunning as all Waterford crystal is. This was the year for Waterford for me, apparently. And then I found this little guy. It says um, Victoria, Australia in there. I'm assuming it's just a little like, you know, souvenir piece. I think it's a capybara. You guys let me know what you think it is. I think it's a capybara, but I don't know what it's made out of because it is really heavy and cold. Like it was carved from stone or maybe made with concrete. I don't know because it's stamped into there. Don't know, but he was fun. So I picked him up. Also got, oh, this guy. He is so stinking sweet. This was made in Occupied Japan. He would have been a set. There would have been a little girl with him as well. But look how stinking sweet he is. His little face is in such, the paint job still in such good shape. So he'd be perfect in a little Christmas display. He'd be perfect in a little January winter display. He was so darling. And then the last thing I got, this is what I say it was very eclectic, not things I would normally pick up, but she was so cool. As best I can tell, this is a vintage handmade Hawaiian souvenir doll, but she was painted in the Bradley doll style. But I think this might be like coconut husk or something. And the glue makes her, her hat stiff. She's got a little tiny seashell necklace. She's just so cool. My cat keeps trying to get at her feathers on her hat here. So, very eclectic haul this week. And I will have a second video up hopefully tomorrow showing you um, something fantastic. And then um, showing you... I think I got myself one thing besides the fantastic thing. <laughs> Wait, do you guys see? You're not going to believe it. Uh, but anyway, that is everything for my haul. This will be all be for sale on Wednesday morning, 10 a.m. Eastern time, live sale. I hope to see you there. Remember, be kind. It doesn't cost you anything, and it may mean everything to someone else. Bye, guys.